Okay, the New Gloss City Council will come to order. Welcome the guest, administration, and the rest of council. With that, Chris. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grove. Present. Councilman Bond. Present. Councilman Shammy. Here. Councilwoman Wright. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. And Vice Mayor Eggleston. Here. Six present. <coughs> Okay. Invocation will be by Chief Trustee. Thank you, dear Lord, for the day and all thy many blessings and many favors. Please be in this meeting. Let thy perfect will be done. Bless our troops, our first responders, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all okay with that i need a motion for the minutes of 10 21. Okay. councilman wright yes councilman Lindsay. yes vice mayor eggleston yes mayor Cook. yes councilwoman grove yes councilman shammy yes <laughs> Accepted. Okay, those have passed, and I need a motion for the minutes of 1028. A move. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grove? Yes. Councilman Chammy? With that said, the minutes for the 1029 work session. A move. Second. Councilman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grove? Yes. Councilman Shamey? Yes. Uh, with that, are there any communications? None that I'm aware of. With that, we'll go to Mr. Kitko for the City Manager's report. Thank you, Mayor, members of Council, members of the public. Uh, good evening. We'll start off our manager's report with our service report, and that is myself. Uh, under Public Works Department, uh, still, even though we're getting into winter, if you see any potholes, you can contact the city, and we'll get out there and do some repairs. Uh, leaf collection has started, and uh, you can uh, refer to the schedule that was out to the newsletter that went to everybody's house, or our website, or at the city building. And we have it in multiple areas. Uh, the city has begun painting curbs throughout the city. We got a lot of the downtown area done. If we can get some of the leaves uh, completed and then we saw some decent weather, we still may move on a little bit in the winter time. It, you know, if we have a mild year, if not, we'll be continue that in the spring. Under the water department, uh, we are still working on our Ohio Public Works Commission old high service pump building upgrade project. Just received our specs uh, from the engineer to get ready to put that project out for bid. Water main lead service line repla replacement project, which is the old section of town. Um, I will be signing that agreement and sending over the notice to award to the contractor. The estimated scheduled date is December 11th for when they'll start. They'll be working straight through the winter. I'll be drafting up a resident letter and getting that out to everybody um, personally to, that's gonna be involved with this project. Under the sewer department, they're still performing general maintenance. Um, we still have our plan expansion study. We are actually working with the EPA and some information that they have as well that not just came to light, but they're discussing some of their things that they're seeing in other plants, and they want to bring that to our attention. Under the 2024 road reconstruction resurfacing projects, uh, we I believe all the manhole adjustments are completed now for West Washington and Villa. All the ADA ramps are complete, so right now they're, we're just awaiting on billing uh, to pay A and B, and and complete that project. Um, the P sidewalk is still um, on schedule to be installed. It was supposed to be here in November, but we've extended the contract. Well, the county did, so they're still gonna get that completed here You know, sometime, hopefully in the next month or so. But it's definitely, um, they've been awarded to do that. No update really on the disc golf course. I'm still waiting on a, another contractor to give me some numbers to make sure I got good numbers when I go into this. I don't like to have too loose of numbers even though the project for clearing it's hard to really detail down you can't really get a, a specific cubic feet and get a exact price and 
and do that. So I'm working on those numbers. Um, application for the, uh, or under additional items, application for the CDBG funds for Carlisle Park Phase 2. It is looking really good. We're just awaiting on final approval. And as you know, we did not get awarded um, for the, I think I passed that out before, for the Ross in Phase 1. So I will be applying again for that here in the near future. Uh, Monroe Meadows and Reserve and Honey Creek Development. Uh, Honey Creek is got all the pavement done. They do have some drawings over to county for model homes. They are working on their street signs currently. We had to actually rename uh, a street sign. Somehow we missed that uh, we have a little strip down by Gasnow Field, which is Honey Creek Drive, and actually named a Honey Creek Drive. So we had to get them to change theirs. I think it's going to be now Reserve Way uh, Drive or something. Reserve Drive. Oh, Reserve Parkway now. Um, so we, you know, we did have a couple, uh, you know, minor hiccups with that. Uh, Monroe Meadows, they are expecting to pave this week, and then they are too as well. Have uh, plans with the county, going to start their first model or two, and uh, you know, starting to see if I can sell some homes. And then uh, again, this is going to be probably a, a winter project, but trying to get some ideas on rebuilding the. Gulf War veteran sign it was up by our old water treatment facility and see what's another way we can do that that would maybe a little bit be a little bit more permanent structure and not have to redo the wood in the future uh, that is all I have on my report I can entertain any questions on the report or anything else within the service departments any questions for Howie? I guess I have one um, you sent a letter. I'm not sure if you did it. I think planning department did it um, to the citizens, I guess, on Drake and Brook, I don't know the name of it, but any some of the streets surrounding that Monroe, whatever it's called. Anyways, I'm not sure it says to come to the planning department meeting, but you can't vote on anything. So I'm not sure why you're asking the citizens to come. It doesn't make good sense to me. So, so it's, it's section one um, for the planning board to approve they've already approved the preliminary plan this meeting is for them to vote and discuss on, on just on the board everything else is done there's there's nothing that citizens can come in and say well we don't want this or we don't want that because right. that was all done in the preliminary plan this is the finalize the final plan so how can the citizens help you by it's coming? a public hearing so it's just open to the public i have to advertise that, that meeting. and you just have to mail a letter to yes. all those people even yes. though it won't do them any good to show up 183 183 that just seems like a huge waste it's of money because that's the way yes. i read it too it doesn't say you can do anything but they it's, want you we did a mailing and wasted that money and absolutely it's not just new carlisle law um i, I believe i yeah. assume that but yeah. i and i assume that's what you were going to tell me too but it's just kind of a silly. How much was it? One hundred and eighty-three dollars. One hundred and eighty-three mailers plus the legal ad in the paper. Plus some, yeah. Okay. Just <laughs> I don't understand the logic of our government sometimes. That's all. Thank you. That's You're all. Yeah, I like every one of those envelopes too. Did you? <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> so yes, I, I know exactly where you're coming from. Yes. I need to get some sticky notes. I know. I'm just joking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was worried too. But you look stamps too, didn't you? <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the longer you are on council, you will find that there are some of these idiosyncrasies that. The department's the administration has to go through mm -hmm. in order to <clears throat> marry up with the Ohio Revised Code Charter, etc. Right. So it's it's one I just, of those it's things. It's just that, when the citizen says, "I got this letter and it says they want me to come, but I can't do nothing. Should I go?" And I'm like, "I don't think so." <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I don't "It's for your information." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You can ask All right, go ahead. Uh, moving on to uh, Chief Trustee, who will give you the fire and EMS report. Council, citizens, for the month of October, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 127 EMS calls in the city. The division responded to 11 fire related calls, seven good and tender service calls, and one false alarm. We had seven EMS calls answered by mutual aid by Pike Township. We had 11 answered by Bethel Clark due to Medic Dog 2 being on a response. We answered seven mutual aid calls to Pike Township, 15 mutual aid calls to Bethel Clark, and three to Bethel, Miami. 
At the time of this report, our run count was 1,430. At this time, it's 1,454. Uh, as always, we still have our smoke detector program to where anyone can, and the citizens can come to the station or call the station and get free smoke detector and we will come out and it'll also install it. And we have started the garage refacing project. Uh, it's ripped off and reboarded and the siding just came in today. So probably next, by next week we'll start residing the garage and we'll have electric put on it. Anyone have any questions for the chief? Go ahead, Bill. What's the uh, comparison from last year to this year on runs? Last year we did 1,515 uh, runs. At this time? Oh, at this time, no, we were, we were uh, a little lower than what we are now. Okay. We're on a, right now, if we continue on our, what we've been doing each month, or even close to each month, we'll go over 1,600 runs for the year. Okay, thank you, sir. Your department does an awesome job, by the way. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? If none. Thank you, Fire Chief. And then uh, moving on to the planning and zoning report, uh, you have the for the month of October in front of you with all your statistics, uh, data summary, permits, um, and then the list of the different um, uh, uh, violation notices that are out there. Uh, any questions on the report? I guess not. And also in your report, you'll have the two um, brief uh, summaries of the court report for October 9th and the court report for October 23rd. Any questions with those? Hearing none. Thank you very much. And moving on to the police report. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it for you. <laughs> Um, yours. Under the patrol division for the sheriff's department, they were dispatched to 292 calls uh, of service during the month of October. Uh, there was 35 reports taken, 122 assists. They made 24 criminal arrests, 13 were felony arrests, five of those were misdemeanor arrests, six of those were warrants with a total of traffic stops of 88. Traffic warnings were 69. Moving citations were 28. Business checks were 941, uh, code enforcement follow-ups 19, uh, traffic crashes 9, and parking citations 6. Uh, and what's funny, I was actually talking to someone I knew in another town, and some of these business checks, uh, they find a lot of business people who forget to lock their doors. So this is a good way that, you know, if they check that door when we're around looking for things to be secure, we can report that to the owner and, you know, get that taken care of. So. I guess, you know, that's part of their um, business checks. Any questions on the police report? Mr. Kidgo, I've got one, not necessarily on that report. Uh, a couple members of council asked me if we could possibly get together with uh, the new sheriff coming in mm -hmm. for a little bit of a discussion, possibly at the work session you think that might be possible? Are you speaking prior to uh, January 6th, 20th? What's the date that? January 6th, he's going in. Yep, 6th. So are you talking before or after? I will it leave that up. After. Yeah, I, it I was, would have to be after. I was thinking after. It probably has to be the sheriff. Yeah, yeah, I can set up a work session. Um, it was later in my topic for informational, but I did request from uh, Mr. Hunt to the 60 day extension. So um, I'm waiting to hear back from him probably this week about that. Um, now he wouldn't be the one I'll, I'll probably talk to about that, but once it's all in, I will definitely get that requested. Okay, I think that would be something that council may wanna meet the gentleman. I have met him here at a meeting back when, what was that, when he was running, wasn't it? For, yeah, some time ago. Other than that, we'll go to the finance. Okay, the finance report will be for the month of October. It's going to be uh, similar to what we just did in the um, report for Town Hall. The revenue that we took in for the month of October was $938,534.94 for a total year to date of $9,003,779.60.
On the expenditure side, for the month of October, we spent $846,426.84 for a total year to date of $7,392,322.42. Under our statement of cash, our beginning balance from January 1st was $8,100,000. $14,991, and we are sitting at the end of October with $8,533,448.89. The banks are all reconciled. The second report that I have is the monthly um, income tax collection comparison. And for the month of October, CCA collected $149,748.42 in income tax. That is in comparison from this time last year of 3%, 3.17. For a total year to date, we are almost 4% higher on collections than we were last year. Then the final report I have is our mayor's court report. And with the fines and court costs, they took in $5,990 for October. For a total year to date of $44,121.30. And I have the other reports attached for council, and I can entertain any questions. Any questions for the finance director? Mr. Mayor, move to accept finance report. Mm, Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Koch? Yes. Councilman Grove? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Move to accept marriage court. Marriage court. <laughs> Councilman Wright? Yes. And Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. <clears throat> Councilman Shammy? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Harris. And uh, moving on under informational items. <clears throat> Comprehensive land use plan. I know um, we're getting ready to uh, get into this pretty quickly. Are we looking to set up a work session here in December, or are we waiting till after the first year to uh, get working on the comprehensive land use plan? Well, it counts later. So wait till the first of the year. I'll be honest with you, it probably would be for me um, just to keep things going because I got some year end stuff really to dig in on my project side as well. I'm not saying I can't get some you know, regular stuff going through, but yes, it would probably be after the first year would really, when we start digging into rules, regulations, and, and, and I've already bought uh, Mr. Moore up to speed that we're getting ready to you know, get started, so he's already been doing his due diligence. Okay, well. Oh. You want to put that off then until uh, after, the first of the year. after the first of the year. When when would we be looking to do that in January? Do you have a, a date, Mr. Kiko? I don't have a date right now. Um, what I could do is at the December 7th, 17th, I think, is the next regular, or would be the last regular council meeting. I could come with some dates for that second uh, Monday of January, probably. You know, to set that up as the first work session or the, yeah, one of those Wednesdays in between our first and third meeting. So maybe even at the December 2nd, I can come with a date and uh, double check. And then I can verify with Ms. Harris and, and Mr. Moore on those working as well for them. I have no problem. Does anybody? Okay. We'll work with that. I will come with that. Thank you very much. Um, I already give my um, update. Well, no, I, I guess I haven't on this meeting. Uh, reserves for Honey Creek and Monroe Meadows. Um, again, they do have plans at the county awaiting uh, approval once their final plats are recorded with the county recorder's office. Then they are allowed then to um, start building their buildings. Under policy and other items council is working on, I, I just need a little catch up on citizen of the year. So I'm a little behind on this one, so I'd like to uh, get with council and find out where this was and you know where, where, where are we going to take this to so I can start you know working on this project. 
I think we ought to put that off till and bring it up next year. Uh, January or February, once we get uh, major stuff out of the way. We do have some major stuff coming up. You're in uh, housekeeping, and then we have the CIP to, to discuss. We have a budget we need to get uh, finalized and uh, things like that. So I think we could put that off to probably February. Uh, I think it would be a, a good suggestion if council is on board with that. Does anybody have, go ahead again. My feeling is kind of, I don't want to pick one resident to be citizen of the year. I, I don't know where that came from. Oh, it was yeah. before me. But what I would rather see is that cool looking award <clears throat> maybe given to like a fireman that retires or, you know, I mean, something that means I don't know. I, it's just how do you pick who's the best citizen of the year? I just don't don't know how I could be expected to do that or any of my teammates here. I just don't know how that would work. And I, I think maybe if we aim it at, like, our, our firefighters don't make much money. They come when we need them. They do what, you know, we ask them to do. They put themselves on the line. And I would like to see us appreciate them by giving them a plaque or something for their time of service. So I would like to see that really kind of thrown away and revamped into something new is what I was thinking. The Citizen of the Year was brought about due to the fact that we had had in the past several citizens that had taken upon themselves to do a lot of things for the citizens or for the community. And this was what that was brought about, and that would have been the way to show some appreciation mm -hmm. from the city for their endeavors and their efforts. You know, and I can give you a, an example. Mr. Woodwald would have been one due to the fact of him basically taking under the auspices of the Little League program and seeing that it was pretty much run. There were several people in that group that could have been recognized, and I'm sure we can commiserate along with that to other aspects of people that have done things. I know in the past there have been sometimes three and four people that were nominated. Of those, I think several of them lived outside of the town, and it was kind of dropped at that point. But that's where that came from. Go ahead, Bill. The, uh, the idea of recognizing our firefighters and our entire department upon somebody retiring, I know we had a, uh, a uh, assistant chief that retired, and to my knowledge, the city didn't do diddly squat for his years of service. Yes, sir? Who did what? The city uh, awarded uh, Chief Ritter a plaque. When was that done? At the Heritage Flight Festival, sir. And the city did that? Yes, sir. News to me, I did not know that. News sir. to me, too. Uh, I think when we do honor our, a retired firefighter, uh, Council should know about it, first of all, and maybe we should do it here instead of at a non-city function. And the heritage of flight, the city has nothing to do with the heritage of flight with the exception of giving permission to shut down 235 for the weekend. So I would like to see the citizen of the year, I agree with Councilman Wright, Councilwoman Wright. We need to scrap that and make it a, an award for retiring personnel, not just fire department, but retiring personnel within the city as, as a whole. With that being said, you know, the aspects of drawing a very large crowd for an event such as re honoring a retired firefighter 
I personally think that to give him that honor in front of the amount of people that the Heritage of Fight brings in would be a great honor rather than having him walk up here and have two or three people here. My comment. Anything more on that? Go ahead, Peg. So are you guys suggesting that we don't recognize citizens at all? We just recognize retired employees? Not at all. That's not at all what I was saying. I was saying I can't set aside a man who saves a child's life, a man that helps the football team, and, you know, a woman who does the parade thing. I just don't want to compare our citizens to each other. They're all great, and I would think that maybe once a year we could honor four, five, six, seven, eight, I don't know how many people that we feel maybe have a little dinner for them. Maybe something like that would be a lot more meaningful. I don't know. I just don't, I don't know. The plaque just doesn't work for me. That's just all. It's just a personal feeling. Go ahead, Peg. Originally, that was the plan mm -hmm. to have recognize the little four or five people who have done stuff. Yeah, it'd be great. And we had a plaque made up to give to present to them to to acknowledge what they've done. <clears throat> Anybody else? Um, I think Bill, you've made comments that you want to see this act or put off until after the first year. Let's revisit this at that point and see what we want to do. That'll give everybody time to yeah, think about it. I don't have it. a problem with that. I mean, we do have a lot of uh, important stuff coming at us between now and the end of the year, and then at the beginning of the year, we, we're going to have the CIP, so, and we we'll still have to finalize the budget, which it hasn't been come back or whatever. Uh, I think, because we've been talking about the citizen year, if I'm not mistaken, probably a couple oh, of years yeah, now, yeah. so I think a couple of more months will not detract or add to it if we could put it up to possibly sometime in February. No, I agree. And bring it back up. Mr. Kitt, go back to you. All right, moving on to bond and ballot information for city council. Um, I am very, very preliminary on the bond for the, city, the new city poll. And then on as far as the police levy, once we get the counties or uh, get the election dates, we will start you know, reverse um, figuring this out on where we need to get the resolutions, the ordinances passed, all well within time, follow the charter and make sure that we get everything in, ready for the ballot. I believe it's gonna end up being March or May. So we'll, we'll have everything ready for the police renewal um, at that time. So you, you'll see some legislation at the appropriate time coming before you. And then um, on upcoming legislation, the big one is the sheriff's contract and dispatching agreement. As I had stated before, they were going to let those go, but I did talk with uh, the law director, and he said to request a you know a 60-day extension, uh, so we can negotiate with the new sheriff. And again, um, the gentleman was not available at the time. He did email me back and said as soon as he gets back in the office, he will do that. Um, he's currently working on some year-end stuff as well, but he said he'd get that to us. So. My guess it could come to us if there's something that just says extend this through. It probably is going to come through as an emergency uh, just because we run out of time. And then um, the last thing, I did meet today with, and it wasn't on your agenda, for, with the person who would do the columbarium for the cemetery, which is a, basically a granite structure with 12 inch by 12 inch by 12 inch um, spots where the cremation rate right now is about 56 percent so we see this getting to be a bigger thing um, he is going to draft up basically once we have a site plan done and let's say we have the concrete footers and we want to do a 48 niche or a 60 niche uh, columbarium and he'll base it off kind of how many people we have cremated you know on average a year 
how much a capital cost would be to buy this unit and then how much would we have to charge for opening and closing and then the actual space for that 12 by 12 uh, niche and then um, figure out he's going to help figure out where the return on investment starts so when you're about say 30 percent full that's when now all the funds coming into the that particular columbarium will then start making the city money towards the perpetual care the whole idea was you know obviously we we have to make money on all grave sales but it's it's for maintenance today but it'll be when the cemetery's full for maintenance afterwards so then if we see we're getting 30 percent full 40 percent full we will probably then order another one so he really didn't have a ballpark on what one cost but just an estimated 60 niche there'd be like 30 uh doors on the front um 30 doors on the rear and it would be basically three foot depth five or six foot high or five or six foot wide so not a super big item for the potential six, 60 urns being put into this do we have a ballpark idea of how many i guess the word is burials we've had on that situation uh, over the past year, <coughs> two years well, I ran into another meeting just after today's, but I believe right now total we're around anywhere between 60 and 80 total. Um, out of those 60 to 80, there are probably 20 or so per year of uh, cremation. Currently, we allow hmm. in a burial site one cremated rain, uh, remains to be able to be put on that site. So something we are considering is what they call second in second rights of internship to where um, if you have that burial site then you charge for those crema that cremation to be then open and closed into that site so then that way you still have some perpetual care funds going in later on and what the cost is for cremation putting in the ground what we're finding out is people that their family members are being cremated are liking the idea of being above ground and not being below ground so it's becoming a very popular item so we're thinking 20 some a year but it may be, it may be um, even more popular than it, we just don't know so that's why I said to start with 48 to 60 see how that goes and then if it's going well then you get a second one once you're so full yeah. but I will have more information price return on investment what we think our charges should be and then we will make a decision on the best route to go I know when I was out to Trostle Chapman, they had informed me that their cremation plans that they were selling were on an upkick. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm looking at the fact of, with that, how many open lots do we presently have in that cemetery that at some point we're going to end up filling? I will have to get with back with you. I know currently we had a five acre piece and we just started plotting off, uh, plotting off some grave sites for that. I don't know the specific numbers. I'd have to get with the superintendent, kind of see what we have left and to kind of estimate we got 10 years left, 15 years, 20 years of burial graves left. Um, I can get some numbers for you. And with that being said too, we were looking at if we were to have this thing, uh, we don't build it, they just bring it and we would be putting it right there on Musselman so people driving down 235 could see it. Like it would be a, like where those two big mausoleums are in the front of the cemetery, it would just be down from them. So it would be a big piece, well, not big in structure, but it would be a piece that would be forefront of the cemetery. So consequently by doing this, we could possibly, I guess the word is increase our burial sites by maybe five years over and above the present ground that you've got if there's if there's 60 niches in each columbarium you can put as many as you want in as they go so we have plenty of room i mean it only takes a 10 by 15 area to put that many you know 60 120 um urns in an area so it, it, it heavily increases that possibility now you know once the burial sites are gone and you're only left with cream cremation um availability I'm not, you know, I'm not real sure then, but I'll get some numbers on where we kind of are projected to go. All right. 
And that is all I have for uh, the city manager's report. Back to you. Anyone have any further questions? Um, I guess I do. Go ahead again. Yeah, I think um, I either wasn't paying attention or something, but you skimmed over the the swimming pool and doing the the comps for that to see what it's going to cost to replace to put that on the ballot. Mm -hmm. Right? You spoke about that. Um, are you you're in the process of getting those numbers for us? I'm in the very beginning. I'm trying to get a hold of some engineers. Okay. Yes, and we have one, you know, 1.2 million, 2.5 million. You know, we're trying to figure out what right. that costs. And, right. Yeah. And then it's really important that we get that on the ballot. And are we thinking the first one or the, the second one ballot? You're probably looking, you're probably looking at November, to be honest with you, to try and push for getting good solid engineer numbers because what you put into the ballot has got to be somewhat final right and, it, and in a, a lot of engineers do not do any design they'll give you ballpark but we can't go into it ballpark mm -hmm. it will cost um and that's what i'm trying to get is hey uh, engineer a b and c I go out and do requests for qualifications for a two million dollar estimated project cost what would it cost me thirty five thousand forty thousand fifty thousand dollars for design plans to get us an engineer's estimate on what we want to put towards a, a bond effort. So is that just, are we just talking a straight lap pool or are we adding some slides and this and that and this and that? It, 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 it will be a completely interactive uh, thing with citizens, uh, council, staff on what the best kind of route, what, you know, there, there's going to be some work sessions. Mm -hmm. There's probably going to be some, you know, obviously public comment. And if everybody came here and said, we just want a pool, nothing else in it, then we'll go to the pool. If they want to have a slide, obviously, you know, the more amenities you put to it, right, that drives money. up. Mm -hmm. it, it'll be a completely all-inclusive uh, facility. Uh, what it's made of, at this point, not sure. Okay. That's all. I was just trying to clarify that a little bit because I know a lot of people are very interested in that. So, me too. I have in my possession photographs of the St. Henry pool. Mr. Fields and I made a trip up to St. Henry while we were out roaming around one week. Their pool cost them 1.8 million and he estimated that today's pricing that pool would probably run 3.6 million. Just double. They do have a slide it's a very nice operation, very clean. Um, yeah, and it it uh, got a nice diving well. Got a uh, what I call them water pad things. Splash pads. Splash pads. I got that over there. It's a it's a zero uh, entrance. You can walk right down into it. You don't step. You have to climb. You can walk oh, right down. Nice. Into it. It's a very nice pool, very nice. They've got nice canopy amenities on the side. They do all their concessions by vending machine, which is a great idea. You don't have to spend money on that. And just let the vendors come in and fill the machines and bada bing. It's a beautiful pool. He's got pictures. Yeah. I know I He's got them. pictures, so you know, we'll bring those into the work session mm -hmm. and that way you all can have a look at it. Uh, the gentleman up there was very, I don't want to say that, amicable to sharing information with us. When asked what kind of a monetary situation were they transferring in, it was very comparable to what we'd been doing. They seem to have a lot higher uh, money coming in on a daily attendance their um, memberships were pretty much in line with us. I think they were, what, something like 150, and then 15 for each additional member that you wanted to include. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was very similar to what ours was. But when we get to that point, we'll, we'll go from there. Our daily gate was like seven bucks. And he tells they made about 44,000. All right, other than that, uh, I guess we'll go to comments from members of the public. If anybody's got anything to say, please come to the podium. 
name, address. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Seafield, y'all know where I live, Edgebrook. First of all, y'all did a good job. That's one. Two, Mr. Kitko, I've been working with you in my professional and private life since you came here. I remember your first day on the job. I've worked with a lot of you people, Connie. Not you so much because you're too new. <laughs> but I did your job for 25 years. Anyway, my point here, Callie, is this. I've watched you come from where you started to where you are today. If these people are smart enough to offer you that manager's job, please take it. That's all I got to say. Thank you for the kind words. Anyone else? If nobody else has got anything to say, we'll go to the resolutions and ordinances. You will, Chris. Yeah. All right. So resolutions, one introduction, one action. Resolution 2024-16R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution adopting the 2025 tw through 2029 capital improvement program for the city of New Carlisle. And an explanation of this resolution is for the 2025 capital improvement program uh, from 25 to 29. The biggest part of this is year 25. That is what, you know, we're the closest to knowing what we really want to get. The next four years, we've kind of, you know, we look out, you know, what's our revenue stream? What's our expense stream? What's the possibilities of this and that going wrong? So that's kind of where that is, is not as good and tight as the specific part of 2025. Um, but everything that we discussed in the previous budget sessions is in or out, uh, pending what council had uh, requested at that time. So any questions with the resolution? Anybody got any questions? Go ahead, Kathy. It's actually a suggestion. Um, I would like in the future for this, I know it's going to sound like more work because it is, but to tie it down to bigger things throughout the years, you know, like with the roads and you know, how many roads we're going to do, how many of this, how, what, I don't know. I just feel like we have a lot of loose ends, like how many buildings do we have, what kind of repairs do they need, things like that. And I don't know where those numbers are. I can't find them. Um, maybe I'm asking the wrong people. I don't know. But we need to take care of what we own, and that's, to me, a real high priority. And, you know, this doesn't really cover much of that. It did have the garage on there on the fire building. But I mean, I think I'd like the CIP to be a lot more specific than it is in the future. I understand this is what we have for this year and that's okay. But I just would like in the future for it to be a lot more coverage. Any further comments? <laughs> Go ahead, Bill. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Kiko. The CIP is pretty much a forecast of wants what we would like to accomplish, what we'd like to do. Uh, none of it is really set in stone because everything in the CIP we have to vote on, correct? Um, no, actually, uh, so once you approve the CIP mm -hmm. and you approve the budget to spend those funds, um, you've approved the expenditures of those funds. Now, if that one project is in here um, that's over 35,000. I got to go out and get bidding, engineering, and all that to do that project. I would assume because the CIP was approved, the budget was approved, then the ordinance to for me to keep going is a formality at that point. We the CIP in the past used to, used to be a want and not a need. What we've done now is since we have some fund balances here and there, we've drilled it down to where. You know, we just don't put a dump truck in 2025 because it fits. We put it in there, A, because we either need it or we don't need it. Yeah, we now past this year because, you know, some things may happen and we may have to reduce some uh, spending. But no, the first year is really what you see in that year for 2025 at least. That's what we're geared to definitely do. No questions asked. You know, it fits. This is the, the priority. Like I said, the garage, you know, it's it's raining in there. So that is a priority. I will not put that off, you know, uh, that type of thing. If for some reason, you know, we're looking to, to replace a dump truck and it's kind of getting there and it's really working well, we may hold off because 
uh, a, um, something else needed to be purchased at a more than an emergency need. But no, that the goal of that 25 part is that's what we're, that's what we're going to do. We've sat down and tried to iron this out and not have to take back, give up, add more. Yeah. Thank you for the explanation. And let me ask a question for the newer council members. Sure. Because this is the first one some of them's been through, and hopefully that helped explain the process at least for 25. Mm -hmm. It does still seem to me though that we should have a plan for 26, 27, not just 40,000 for you know playground equipment. I just I think. You know, we need to know, well, okay, we have how many trucks? 38 trucks? I don't know. Let's say, but how many need replaced? How many have to be, you know, it's like we need to be on a schedule of replacing things, even, yeah, even if they're not. Well, I'm going to give it up because I'll learn more. If I may. Go ahead. To, to answer Councilwoman. Sure, please. Uh, Councilwoman. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I'll get it out in a minute. <laughs> We, we do have our vehicles on a, on a five-year rotation, I believe, now. That was started, I think, a couple of years ago that the former manager was putting together a rotation. Is that, that is still in play, I assume? Um, definitely with police. Now, I am working on stuff with, like, some of our older pieces of equipment to get those replaced. Mm -hmm. And fund balances is where you got to be able to have enough of that, you know, to replace some of those. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, I mean, we have some vehicles that are 20 years old mm -hmm. um, with good maintenance. You know, we've extended those. There are places that do five years, 10 years. Um, we're a small town, so we don't drive very far. More so as ours is idling. We might be missing a cab corner, but you know what? Um, if it looks good, the paint's great, and it hauls three ton of asphalt, you know, 100 times a year, it's working for us. But then when we, like you said, when we start getting to that point where we're like, wow, this thing could probably break down, that's when you'll see like wastewater. We just replaced this dump truck with a used one, but it was in immaculate shape for a, a, like a township that hardly ever used it. But it sat and hauled, it took sludge off of a conveyor belt and pretty much rusted it out. So we had plans for this year because we knew it was going bad last year to make that replacement. So our vehicles are on some of a rotation, but if we would good maintenance, we'll extend them a little longer so that way we can plan out another vehicle purchase. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have a motion for the second. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, Vice Mayor Eagleston. Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. <coughs> okay, ordinances, nine introduction, four action tonight. Ordinance 2024-58, introduction on 11-424, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assistant city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of water softening rock salt. Mm -hmm. And an explanation of this ordinance is uh, for us to do a, for the year of 2025 to have water softening salt. Uh, we put this out for bid with Morton Salt coming in at $136.65 uh, for the year 2025 at our water treatment plant. Any cool? Go ahead. You know. Um, yeah, did that include the additional water softener that we had spoke about in the last meeting? We were talking about softening the water up a little bit more than what we do now. So you don't, you don't always, we always bid out 500 ton, and we've always been coming under, so I didn't have to change that amount. Okay. No. So are we going to use a little extra and get our water just a tad softer? Yeah, and sometimes it goes up or down. So, yeah, we do have it sitting down at about, I think it's at like 140. We were at yeah, 180. Yeah, gave us the number, but, I mean, if we could go down like, you know, <laughs> yeah, just well, another 10 or 15, that so, would be nice for the citizens. So it is, but a lot of times you won't notice it. And I'll be straight, I'll be honest with you. Um, unless you are at zero, like a home water softener, mm -hmm. where you get that silky, hard to rinse off. Yeah, Some people are used like to that. it. <laughs> yeah, so then our raw is 365, mm -hmm. home softeners take it to zero. Our softeners take it to zero. But what we do is we blend in some filtered water back into it for aesthetics. Minerals make the water taste better. Um, 
Sometimes your elderly who are salt sensitive, if you take it too low, that sodium, so there's two hardness minerals, calcium and magnesium. You remove those with sodium. That puts more sodium into the water. So they'll tell you if you do, uh, when you do some of the research that if, if they have a high blood pressure or something that has to do with salt, that can be. So the industry average, Kettering, Springfield, Dayton, we're all trying to sit around that 140 to 160. Mm -hmm. That's where it's too, too cost, if not cost effective to take it like to 100. Uh, it's it just not. Um, and then, but you don't want raw water at 360 some and you can't make any suds at all. Right. So we're rating at 140 to 150 to where you get good suds, good flavor, um, not corrosive, healthy, and, and it's, it's been a good balance. It does seem a lot more corrosive than it used to be, though. And corrosive? Yeah, well, as, you know, as far as leaving the bits and pieces on the faucets and tearing up your water heaters and things like that. Yeah, you'll have that because we have to put raw water back into it. Mm -hmm. um, and so you'll have some minerals get back into there. It's, it's all part of uh, municipal water treatment. Right. I was just hoping we could bring it down just a little bit. It would make the citizens very happy. Most would like it a little softer. It's very hard. I, I would uh, entertain them, come talk to me um, or give me a call because I would like to know where they notice it because most people don't notice the bubbles, the feeling on the skin. The, the tasting, because a lot of times when it gets to zero, I'm used to my zero water to house, but sometimes I think the city water tastes better with minerals in it. Or if you go buy bottled water, they add minerals to it. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Grow. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. <clears throat> Ordinance 2024-59, Introduction on 11424 Public Hearing and Action Tonight, an ordinance amending Chapter 276 of the Codified Ordinances of New Carlisle for the purpose of establishing parks and recreation and public service commissions and to provide guidelines for commissions. Do I have a motion? Second. Okay. And an explanation of this ordinance, um, we discussed it, I think, a few uh, things at the last meeting, but this would help establish uh, a couple boards and commissions with a um, the Public Service Commission and the uh, establishment of the new Parks and Recreation Commission. And I do believe some of the bylaws and things that this says you need to do have already been started. I haven't even begun to dig into that as that was a, you know, another project um, with the other city manager, so that's to be coming. Any comment? Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? <coughs> yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grow? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman <coughs> Wright? Yes. Accepted. Uh, Ordinance 2024 60, introduction on 11 424, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending the city of New Carlisle zoning code to add solar energy regulations. Do I have a motion? Second. Second. In an explanation of this ordinance, um, I'll, I'll pass. I'll end up passing this off. But this was work between uh, Mr. Fields and in their planning board, and Mr. Moore, the planning director. Uh, what had happened is there were companies and, and or homeowners uh, approaching, calling about solar. We have zero uh, information in our codifieds about solar. So um, they had done a code write, and then um, for details on that, Mr. Moore, if you want to uh, g give a brief description on that, and then if Mr. Fields has any more input as far as planning uh, board. We can entertain questions through them. Thank you, Mr. Kiko. Uh, basically, the regulations governing the construction, um, modifications of solar energy panels, operations, abandonment. Oh, my apologies. Just so they can hear you. Oh, sorry. Sure. Sorry. Uh, modifications, abandonments, um, and reasonable conditions that will provide public health and safety for residents and businesses who want to install solar panels. And I can answer any questions. 
Bill, go ahead. You were first. You said something about uh, abandonment. Yes. And I don't know exactly where it's in, is in there. Okay. But I'm going to paraphrase it because I don't have the exact words in my head. That's okay. Something about the uh, city determining when something is no longer use, using usable or functional. Okay. Uh, why would the city have any say so in if my unit's working or not? Uh, I would think the homeowner would know better if it was working or not. Uh, unless lightning hit it is just sitting there in pieces, then I would still think the homeowner would want to take care of it. So that one section in there, and that's just one of several that, that uh, comes to mind that I would like to see removed, and I'm looking for it. I, do you know what I'm talking about? I do. It, it would be under um, number 12 of section, let me look here, 1295.06 under design standards, okay. number 12. Number 12. Where it okay. talks about abandonment. Um, what I've come to think about when I think about abandonment is if that property becomes vacant for one, um, the elements that are inside these solar panels can, can become very uh, deadly. Um, they could cause issues with the EPA. Um, so if we're if we have a vacant home or a solar panel has been abandoned and maybe the homeowner doesn't know because they didn't install it themselves, it was done professionally or whatever, they weren't educated on what was inside those things. And we do these types of inspections and we notice that, okay, this solar panel is broken. So that a broken solar panel would either need to be replaced or it needed to be abandoned. So that's where that's, that's coming from. But if the place is, <clears throat> as a scenario, if the place is sitting empty, say I have them in my house and, and I decide to move and I have a realtor trying to sell it. Mm -hmm. It isn't abandoned, it's vacant, but it's in the process of being sold and it could take up to six months to sell it. Sure, I think there should be a clause in there too about how long it needs to be abandoned for. Because in that scenario, it could either increase your property or it could decrease your value of your property depending on what type of solar panel or situation that you have. So I think there should be something in there that maybe justifies that. As far as is okay. there something in there that I don't? I'll, I don't think I have anything. I don't, I don't think there's it. anything exact except for section B. It says this continuation of use: the owner shall physically remove the solar energy system within 180 days from the date of abandonment. But who decides when the abandonment occurs? That's it doesn't if specify I read it correctly. It's the city. I didn't. I don't think it says the city determines the abandonment date. The city de determines if it's been abandoned, I believe is what it said. Correct. And I wish I would have printed this out and highlighted No, that's okay. Uh, I think it should be more than just the city saying it's abandoned and not working or for malfunctioning or whatever. I think maybe a, a uh, electrician that's I don't know if you have to be certified to work on on those uh, to, I know you have to be an electrician to hook it up, but uh, another section is that, that it had to be installed by uh, qualified people, translation to me, I can't mount the stuff, get it hooked up uh, the way it needs to go, and then have an electrician come in and hook it up in the box. because. If you don't know what you're doing in a box, you hit the wrong thing, you know, you, you run 440 volts there, you're going to be dead. In some cases, 220 if you're standing in the water barefoot on concrete. Right. Uh, and there's people that would, I've seen people work on electric barefoot standing on the ground. I'm thinking, wow, you're looking to get jolted. So there's some things in here that, that I think needs to have better clarification okay. and or removed entirely and again like i said i wish i would have printed this thing out and highlighted some of those things 
the in installation is one. I think if the homeowner wanted to install it on their roof, and and then have an electrician come and hook it hook it up, homeowners should be allowed to do that. Uh, I have been told that something here in the county, and I forget the name of it. Uh, Supposedly, you can't change an outlet in your house without their permission, which well, I won't even tell you what I think about that. Well, the housing code. So that's that. it. The, the housing, county housing code, is county it? County housing code. You know, which I think that's a, contract. that's a way overstepped of uh, Well, of, let, me, uh, let me address part authority. of what you said about the, the discombobulated system yes, and who's going to determine that. Absolutely. These things are tied into AES. Mm -hmm. They feed back into the system. Right. AES can tell you whether or not that thing's functioning or not functioning. There's your determination well, they, right there. Yes, I agree. They probably could, but uh, it doesn't. Does it have to feed back into their system? I know if you yeah, have more. Not. Yes, it has to feed back. No, it does not. Yes, you it can, does. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to put the battery packs? I know if you have more. You, uh, where are you going to put it? Where are you going to put all them batteries? Garage or something. Okay. You know or how volatile lithium use, ion batteries are? Maybe you're not going to use the battery pack. Maybe you're only going to use the electric during the sunshine. It's got to you go can somewhere. Do that. It's got to go somewhere into a panel. Okay. You're, anytime you hook in to your electric, you're going to have to get something from AES and a qualified electrician to make those changes. Otherwise, AES is going to come in here and cut you off. I'll pull your meter and you're done. That's the disconnect you yeah, the I'm pole. not talking about hooking into AES. That's all. Well, Anything you, are. you hook into your house is hooking into AES in this city. It doesn't have to. It does. <laughs> well, if you're going to powder your house with it, Kathy, okay. it has to go Never through your mind. panel. Never mind. And your I panel do. is fed by Never what? Mind. AES. That's you're, all I got. You're up. You two got any more? Anybody else got anything? I, I was reading in that section um, on 12 abandonment A, at such time a solar energy system is scheduled to be abandoned. Um, it right now it, it doesn't look it doesn't appear to me trying to dig through this um, that if someone has a system on their house selling it it doesn't really matter it just if if the homeowner says i'm done with it they have to notify and say i'm going to abandon the i'm going to abandon this solar the solar system this um <laughs> solar energy system um then they have to notify us to let us know that they're going to abandon that i didn't see anything in here unless correct me if i'm wrong just because the house sits vacant and it's sitting up on their roof um that we come and say that that system does not no longer work that i'm forcing you to take it off your roof that it, is that's true i was using it as one example oh, okay of scenario. i was to say that is not in but there, i was so. going to get back to what you were just talking about yeah. that the application process it says in there that they would notify the planning department if they were going to abandon the system so we would know one way or the other it also says Which, 180 days that would be from the from the day they notify us uh, that it's going to be abandoned they would have 180 days to abandon the, the the system so we do not as the city determine its abandonment date that will come from the homeowner says it's not working anymore or somebody above us says you're back feeding too much into our system or this is illegal you know not from a city's perspective right and they say you must abandon it and then when they originally got the permit from us to put those on then they have to notify us hey we got told we got to abandon or it's not working abandoned, then it follows the 180 days to get them removed. Correct. So, <clears throat> so based on that scenario, if I as a homeowner determine my system is not malfunctioning by whatever means I come to that realization, I can't go up there and just take it off and well, yeah, it. sure. I think right. What, what are they? What are they and saying? Then, it and doesn't then say, say who oh, has by the to way, take it off, city, right? I, no, it doesn't say. I, I don't have my my solar panels no more. I took them off because I got tired of them. And that's fine. And do I need a permit to take them off? Well, if you're going to demo your garage, you need a permit for a demolition on your garage. Yeah, if I'm going to demo so my garage, so, I'm just going to blow so, it up. Right. Either way, so <laughs> even an abandonment 
a permit should be included in it somewhere along those lines as we look forward to moving forward with these things I think that should be part of that because a demo is demo if you're demoing a garage you need a permit for that if you're demoing, demoing something like this that is so extensive with electricity and different things there should be a permitting process to that that makes sure an electrician is coming out and doing that properly does that make sense because if you're just ripping panels off your roof and you don't know what you're doing you, somebody's going to get electrocuted this is, is no different than having a whole house generator. Once you put that in there and you put that transfer switch in, you're hooked up to your main panel. A certified person from Clark County has to come out and certify that all of that work has been done appropriately. If not, he's not going to sign off. Yeah, you need a permit from the county for the generator. Yes. Great. And this would require a permit from the county from, from the county. for the electrical and installation side of all those things. Because they would, they would have to submit with the permitting application that AES is aware of this, that they know that this is happening, that there's an approval process with that, and that the uh, county has certified an electrician and a permit to install or to abandon. Okay. And my other point was too, this, this is gonna sound funny, abandonment, regardless of how it's done, you remember the old big dish satellites? The things that were yeah, like- I ripped a couple of those out of the yard. 10 of those. We don't want, and this is not what we as a city, how those were in properties, we don't want those all of a sudden becoming like the new uh, panels. They're destroyed, they're cracked, they're bad looking, and all of a sudden we can't get rid of them. Like the old big satellites. Yeah, the six Six footers, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I think it's just in a way to make sure that it's god awful, it's broken. They were told to get rid of it. We kind of want to probably look at, you know, not have any safety issues. It's more safety and health than than anything. And that's for overall roof and ground mounted. Ground mounted is a little harder, actually, a little more intricate to deal with than roof mounted, because now you have kids who have access, animals who have access to these electrical components if they're not properly buffered you know, with a fence or a screen or whatever that looks like proper stickers on there to say this is a hazard or electrical charge. So that's why I believe that these regulations should be put into place. It's for the, to protect the health and safety of our citizens. Anything further? I just want to say that I wholeheartedly disagree with this. It's very long, very wordy. It's kind of confusing. I don't see anything about DIY. And there are people that are totally capable of putting the system in. Yes, you would still need an electrician to hook it up to your components. Yes, that's fine. And no, you do not have to sell it to AES or any other electric thing. You know, it, it's just, to me, it's far-reaching. So that's what I'll say. I'd like to comment on that, if I Go could. I, I, I agree with you. There, there's many people who are capable um, of installing these themselves. I have no, no doubt about that. But I have a personal experience um, that really kind of started all this for me where a seven-year-old boy died because of a DIY project, because of solar energy panels. And so, yeah, I'm kind of on the fence about this both ways. It wasn't properly regulated, DIY project, the electrical was wrong, it wasn't buffered correctly, and a kid, a seven-year-old boy got electrocuted and died because of a DIY project. So ask yourself, is it worth that flip of the coin? Is it worth it to do a DIY project because you know you're capable, because maybe your neighbor is capable, but make a mistake, not have it regulated, and somebody gets killed or your pet gets killed because of that mistake? I think we owe it to our citizens to protect the health and safety of our citizens. I think the kind of people that are going to do that are going to do that irregardless of however many rules and regulations we have written. Because you would have your system designed by a professional, you would install it, the electrician would hook it up. That's the way most people do their own systems, and it's a third of the cost of doing it all professionally. You can buy so, these panels on Amazon. And do oh, it, I know you yeah, can. Yeah, do it yourself. Right, you can. And that's where that risk that's comes right. from of that seven-year-old boy who lost his life because the purchase was made online to install these solar panels, and it wasn't properly regulated. I'm just saying it's not going to save that kid's life. Because they'll buy it on Amazon still and hook it up. You're just making it harder on other people who do follow rules. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I see it. Okay. Kathy, what? you are protecting the citizens of this city. When you pass <clears throat> something like this and you have to 
have the legislation in place. Like he has said, somebody hooks it up illegally or not according to code, you're going to have a major lawsuit on your hands. And I do not want this city to be any part of a legislative problem with a lawsuit that we have not done our job. If you have it professionally engineered and you have an elect, all right, that's fine. You, you, are, you still have to have legislation. You know, if you're going to enforce any and kind of I'm fine of with ordinance. that. I don't want solar panels on people's roofs. I don't want crappy looking stuff in their front yards. I'm fine with that kind of stuff. This is way beyond. This is eight pages of small font that, to me, is a whole lot more than we need. It, it, it's not even addressing the things that might be of interest, like do we want ground mountain systems? Is that something we want in the city? It looks terrible at people's yard. Far be it from me to say you can't have it, but I'm just saying that so, to me that's more in line of what we are doing here. But gr okay. Ground mounted systems would require a conditional use permit through this regulation in the residential districts. Right. The only place ground mounted systems would be permitted use is in agricultural. Um, they would be not permitted use in general business districts. Without that regulation, right now, without any regulations, a, a business in our general business district or our central business district downtown can put a ground-mounted solar panel in their parking lot. Mm -hmm. They could do I that. I want to stop that. I do. So I, I that's do, why these regulations have come about to give us some no. structure of how, where do we want these at? What is it going to look like? Is it going to be safe? Is it going to have the proper setbacks? These, the sizes of these ground-mounted solar panels can be as small as 96 square feet. Now we're talking about an accessory structure. Do we have enough uh, lot coverage in the yards to be able to have a ground-mounted system? So there's a lot of things back and forth that could play a factor into whether or not somebody should have a solar panel system in their yard or on their roof. What if they put on their roof and you're the neighbor and the sun is glaring on your property and causes a glare issue? In our code, we have rules against glaring. Um, so these, this, this is all put together to help us prevent violating other city ordinances and also keeping our citizens safe and healthy. Is it, is it possible to <clears throat> have something in here added in here if it isn't already to eliminate ground structure solar panels that they must be on the roof uh, in residential areas and while well, you're thinking of that answer these has to be the panels has to be facing south do they not uh, for the sun no I don't believe they be, they, they be facing any yeah direction. like if the peak of your roof is facing east or west okay you're all, you, you should have it like 36 inches off the the bottom of your roof in case it like slips off or something like that or you know something breaks but if by doing it on east and west, you're not going to get sun north and south. Okay. Um, so it, there's, there was no regulations that I could come across as I was putting this together that said this had to be done on the south end of your house or, or whatnot. Um, some residential areas, though, the R5 district, um, there's, they're bigger lots, could benefit from ground-mounted solar panels. R7 district, that's... A lot of close-knit lots together may not be as beneficial to have ground mounted so that's why it's conditional use it's going to depend on where you live how big is your structure do you have the lot coverage are your setbacks going to be there do you have the proper buffering do you have the permit done is everything in place otherwise without all those things you just put them up and flip the coin Go ahead. I just want some. I, I just have a question for some clarity. Okay. Um, it's really just a question. That's okay. <laughs> um, so, from from what you're saying, like people couldn't uh, like get the permit, buy the panels, put them on their roof, 
before hooking anything up, just install them only on their roof and then have an electrician come in to give their approval and to hook it up into the system? They would want to get all permits that we have in the city right now have to be filled out before any work is started. Yeah, that's so, what I'm saying. But yes. like the person, like if I were to buy them, could I put them on my, like get the permit, install them on my house, not install it into the electric system, just just the panels, have an electrician come out and do all the electrical work, make sure everything was good and up to, I mean, they would do all the work. I would just install my, is that okay? Or Absolutely. If all the okay. requirements in the permit application are met on that checklist, it doesn't matter to me who installs it. Okay. I don't think it matters to anybody else who installs it. an electrician it. to come in and double, to install the electric part. Into well, I think from both ends because if it's not connected correctly at the panel, that could be a problem. Yeah, but I mean the and panels themselves corrected. before connecting them, like the citizen who purchased them could, after they got the permit, could install them on their roof. They and then have an electrician come in and do the electrical work. If if Does they've if they've met all the requirements on the permit application, absolutely anybody can install them. Okay, I yep. wasn't sure if I was. Being no, that's serious. okay. <laughs> no, an electrician doesn't have to physically come out and install these panels. Okay. A contractor doesn't have to come out and install these panels. You don't even have to hire a business. You can do it yourself if you meet all the requirements in these regulations. Okay. So what are the requirements then? So there's... Um, which which page is that? Or, there's a lot of pages. There's a 129505 talks about the procedure for the permit re application review. So those 13 requirements um, are, are standard requirements that would have to be met. What well, I wanted to say... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I'm sorry. I, I, I was just going to make a statement. So typically when New Carlisle does permits, we permit to allow what we're going to do is cozier with the city as far as the area, the location. For instance, accessory structures. We say where it goes. Then the building code comes into place. The NEC comes into place, which is the National Electric Code. So if we say, hey, we're good with you putting panels on this house on Firwood, that's where we stop. Now it's up to the homeowner to follow the NEC, National Electrical Code, and Clark County Building Regulations and the State Electrical Code. So some things like in plumbing, um, the homeowner can dig the ditch, they can lay the pipe, but they have to hire a licensed plumber to come inspect. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. In, in that case, typically when you get into electrical stuff, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the NEC states on, on yeah. solar panels. Um, I don't know what Clark County states on solar panels. It's a whole ball game if, if uh, Brian says, you can put them on your roof, but now you gotta go to the county. The county is the one who is gonna regulate because they have the licensed electrical inspector to, to do that work on that structure. They're gonna tell you, you're allowed to do this much in-house DIY, this much you can't. Or they're gonna tell you, you have to hire a li licensed electro uh, contractor to do it all, but then again, then Joe, Susie, whatever, and just does it anyway. There, there is always going to be that, you know, right. to do that. Um, and just one last thing, not to, to extend it too much. And, and understand when, when we're writing code, writing legislation, Ms. Wright, I am with you. I like simplicity. Mm -hmm. However, we all know, and this is not on Jake, this is, this is not on it. Attorneys make sure that every T is crossed. And I is dotted. That's why stuff is so long. We can't just say, you can put on house, blah, 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 20 words. It doesn't work that way. I, don't, I, I can't change it. I don't believe council can change it. It's If someone does a lawsuit, they're going to say, how deep is your code? And if it's only 20 words, you're probably going to get you know, slapped with a lawsuit. Again, I like simplicity. And I don't like it all being wordy. But that tends to be how attorneys make stuff be to cover all aspects. I want to recap one, one thing that he had mentioned. Um, when I get a permit for an accessory structure, new residential construction, or an addition to an existing residential, anything over 200 square feet after I approve that permit, I email that directly to Clark County. They require a building code, or our code requires anything over 200 square feet requires not only my permit that they have to pay for and provide a site plan for, but they also have to pay for another permit with Clark County and have them actually come out and do the building inspection. So that's kind of how this is leaning. I do my due diligence on my end. We do the simple stuff. Is there lot coverage? Is there is the peak on the roof correct? Is there 18 inches or less on, on, on the roof? 
these 13 things is my due diligence. Anything past that, that's where the county gets involved and the NEC gets involved. Mm -hmm. I just need to collect some data so I can forward this on them and say, yes, they've met these requirements. Yes, sir. On oh, number 12. Yes, sir. Does that permission enter my, enter my yard at any time? No, sir. Because to get into my backyard, you're going to drive a truck through my gate to get the gate to open. Totally understand. That's why I'm asking for documentation. And we would just not show up without a knock on the door or a phone call first. If there's ever a, com a co-compliance issue, like I get a complaint that your solar panel is broken or it's glaring into the neighbor's bedroom. We're going to do what we do with every code compliance situation. We're going to come out and we're going to look at it. We're okay. going to take photos and we're going to go through that process. So that isn't a blanket that slip. Is, that is not a blanket. Violate no, because it only follows under 129505 of this chapter. It's not mentioned in any <coughs> other chapter of our codified ordinances. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Moore? Or? I think he's done a quite good job of explaining it i don't agree with a lot of it however but uh i understand the need for it and with that mr mayor you can have it all right thank you mr Moore. Thank, thank you mr moore you're thank right you, Ed. appreciate it and the other thing is welcome to politics <laughs> these are things that have to be done in order to protect our ever-loving posteriors. Do you want the amendments added to this about the lawyer? Um, so, yes, council, you can uh, vote to approve as is. You can uh, vote to decline. Or you can vote to do amendments. And the amendments are typos. Uh, the law director is the only one who will make these amendments. Then this ordinance will then come back to you like the... Um, I had just at the top uh, something came to you with amendments before mm -hmm. and we we just voted on that amended ordinance and it was effective almost I think 15 days after that it was 1460 uh, 25 related to um, zoning inspector being able to violate for 12 9, 1200 codes okay so before it wasn't we, that's so what we did, we after the amendments. after the typo amendments will be corrected we'll be back in front of council for a final amendment approval so so do we need a motion to wait, 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 wait. I think we've already got a motion on now, the let, let me finish my thought and then we'll know if we have a motion. Do we need a motion to accept it with the amendments? Or amended a motion to accept it with the amendments? I would say that'd probably be uh, proper. Okay. That would be I, my I move to accept this ordinance with the amended whatever has to be amended in it to come back to us at a later date with the amendments to be uh corrected by the law director yes, only right yeah Same. yeah what have we said <laughs> <laughs> thank you sir you're welcome <clears throat> okay so councilwoman Wright. we'll be voting on the amendment yes i know yes councilman Lindsay. yeah Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grow? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. We appreciate it. Um, so ordinance 2024-63, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 12-224, an ordinance amending section 238.03 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding the division of fire. Ordinance 2024-64, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 12-224, an ordinance amending the compensation for the clerk of council. Ordinance 2024-65, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 12-224, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with Miami Valley Lighting, LLC, for street lighting services. Ordinance 2024-66, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 12-2, an ordinance establishing appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the city of New Carlisle, state of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2025. Ordinance 2024-67, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 12-224, an ordinance authorizing a contract for city employee health insurance. 
Ordinance 2024-68, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 12-224, an ordinance amending the city of New Carlisle's estimated resources available to appropriate, appropriate, appropriate for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2024. Ordinance 2024-69, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 12-224, an, an ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in New Carlisle City's Ordinance 2023-61. Ordinance 2024-70, introduction, public hearing, and action on 12-224. An ordinance approving a collective bargaining agreement between the City of New Carlisle and the City's AFSCME chapter. Ordinance 2024-71E, introduction tonight, public hearing, and action tonight. An ordinance removing an authorized signatory from all financial accounts of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, just quick explanation. This is just to remove Mr. Bridge from uh, signing or accessing any and all accounts. Any comment? If not, Chris. Okay, Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. <clears throat> Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. I need a motion to excuse Mr. Vaughn from the meeting. So moved. <clears throat> Second. Do you have to state a reason or just the motion for it? I'm sorry. You don't have to have a reason? No. Okay. My notes from NY City, you're supposed to have a reason to excuse him. That's why I wanted to make sure. Um, Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Councilman Shammy mm -hmm. and Councilwoman Wright. Yes. All right. Is there anything else to be brought? Go ahead, Bill. Is that what it is? Uh, <coughs> Council neglected to excuse uh, Mr. Bond and what's his name, Mr. Shammy, from the oh. town hall. Okay. I make a motion to excuse them for those mm -hmm. for that meeting also. Need a second. 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 <laughs> uh, Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Sure. Yeah. You don't vote. Councilwoman <laughs> Wright? Yes. All right, so accepted. Anything Good else to come before Council? If I may, Mr. Shemi has to abstain and give the reason why. Okay. I only have one other question, if I may, sir. Uh, <laughs> and it just left me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get back to it next week. <laughs> Nothing else? I guess I need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. We have not finished reading the rest of these no, no. Uh, other business. There is no executive session. We have additional business that the clerk needs to read, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Withdraw. Yeah. <laughs> Did I need to read? Read the additional business, ma'am. Oh, am I supposed to read that portion of it? Okay. Um, city offices will be closed 1128 and 1129 for Thanksgiving. And then any other open discussion? We already did that part. Move to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody second it. Second. 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 Uh, second. Uh, Councilman Wright. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Please. Councilman Lindsay, Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Grove. Yes. Councilman Shannon. Yes. You see these